Yes, this indoor aquaponics system is finally ready for fish. And they are gonna love it just as much as these plants have been. This has been cycling for a week now with the plants adapting and they're gonna be cleaning the water out for all the fish that are gonna go in. But before I put anyone in here, let me show you how I built this and why this system, every little detail is gonna work great. First, I'm gonna fill this reservoir up and I'm gonna use water from other fish tanks. It's already going. And I'm also going to place substrate that I've saved from their original aquarium that broke and put it in the bottom of this. Then I'm gonna connect both of these flood tables on either side with pumps independently. They're gonna flow up, flood the tables, and then flow back down. If you're not familiar with aquaponics, the goal for this will be that the fish waste will feed the plants and the plants will then make clean water for the fish. What a great system. So here is the old substrate and I'm hoping there's still some snails hanging out in here. Let's find out. All right, so now I've added substrate to one side, which knowing plecos, they're definitely gonna spread it everywhere. They're, they're amazing at mixing things up and uprooting plants in particular. I'm also gonna add some driftwood, some of their old driftwood that was in their tank. Uh, they love driftwood, they eat off it, biofilm collects to it, and they hide around it and under it. So I wanna make them feel at home. If you don't know what this is, it's called cork bark, and it's commonly used for reptiles, for hiding places, because it's super light, but it also floats um, forever. I've had it in tanks for years, and I like that. It provides some cover for the fish inside. Algae will grow on top and underneath, um, and it gives them a feeling of protection. It seems like they, they dig it, so I'm adding some in. And next step, now that I've gotten their decor done, it's time to add some water. So I guess my neat positioning of wood didn't make a ton of sense considering all the wood is now floating, which makes sense because it's been sitting there drying out for a couple weeks. So now that the reservoir is full, it's time to connect both flood tables. I already got one set up for us to see and you can see how this works, ready? It's gonna pump up from this pump right here and it goes up it comes out right there and then floods the table. And then once it gets to this level right here, it's going to overflow. Let me take this filter cover off. Watch this, just so you really get an idea. All right, so you see pumps in from this guy and overflows right here. I put this in here, this screen, to prevent clogging, although, Sometimes it almost seems to cause it. So let me show you. Now, when the pump turns off, the water drains back into the res. So I'm gonna set this up on an interval timer. But this is basically what it'll do, you can see. I just took this guy out to show you how it's gonna siphon right back down. Now, when this pumps water up here, of course, it is gonna lower the reservoir. So I'm a little worried if both tables are flooding at the same time, it could really lower the reservoir and when they drain back in and empty, it'll fill it back up. So the level's gonna be going up and down. I used to have this cool interval timer that would send electricity between one and two switches. It would turn one switch on and you could set the duration. So let's say it's five minutes. So one switch would be on for five minutes while the other was off and then would switch. So the other was on while the other was off and you could adjust the duration how you liked it. And that way, imagine water could be pumping to this one while it was draining from the other, and it would keep the water fairly balanced. That being said, one thing I've learned, whenever you fill a res, make sure all flood tables are drained down because if you ever have an incident where all the power goes out, it'll overflow the res. The flood table I've already set up is a pretty standard setup, so water pumps up and down on the same side, so water floods the end. Now, one thing I don't love about that is, once it is at the surface, water's basically coming up from here and then quickly going back down and the water throughout the rest of the table isn't moving. So over here on our discus tank with a flood table above, I've had it set up for a while and it's working so well where it pumps up on one side over here, flows through and then drains back down over here. The reason I really like that is you have water flow continuously going in this way. Now, when it does turn off, the water does drain backwards through the pump, so it does have both directions. 
But once that overflow starts, the water is just continuously flowing through the table, which I really like. So I'm gonna do that on the side that we haven't set up yet. So for this other side over here, that's how I'm gonna set it up. It's gonna pump up from here, flow all the way to the other side of the table. Water's gonna come out over here, flow through, and then drain out over here. When the pump turns off, the water will actually then flow back and down again through where the pump comes up. Let me show you. I'm gonna walk through how to build this too. Got everything we'll need to use right here. So this is a one inch tub outlet and I like using one inch. A lot of people use three quarter, but to me, the more flow out, the better because it'll reduce the chance of an overflow. Imagine if it starts backing up a little and it's pumping in quickly, it could overflow over the sides if you don't have enough drainage. Uh, this is an is, is a extender, so this is gonna raise the height. So it's gonna overflow over here, and this is the filter, and this is my one inch tubing. I cut three feet of it. Next, a pump. Uh, this is uh, 160, so don't overdo it because again, it'll cause the tub to overflow. Sometimes less is more. I have 12 feet of hash, half inch tubing. This is the inlet. This is the filter for that. So it'll flood up through that from the res. And then finally, I have my drill with a hole saw or one of these guys and some sandpaper. I'll show you how to use that. All right, first step is to drill some holes so we can install those tub outlets and inlets. Um, and so I'm gonna take it away from the aquarium because plastic will break off and we don't want it going in the aquarium. All right, I'm gonna start drilling the hole for the inlet. And now remember, you can always drill a bigger hole, but you can't make it smaller. So be careful, check it, and you wanna get it as tight as you can. If you can wind up threading it in, that's the best case because if it's too big, it'll be wobbly and you're much more likely to have a leak. I've had that problem and you have to stuff some washers in to resolve it. So let's get going on this. I'm gonna do it right here. And again, I'm gonna do it from the bottom. I flipped it over. And these, whole, these guys are good, but without question, these uh, drill bits, can definitely go too fast and um, you can overdo it. So be careful, you know, slow down, test it, make sure it's the right size and you don't make too big of a hole. It's hard to see, but because that drill bit, you know, narrows, it creates, you know, a concave hole. So long story short, I'm gonna drill from both sides to get it consistent from both sides. That, that's perfect. I hear it? Just a little bit of room, but nice and tight. Now see that there, that little bump? That's gonna wind up causing a leak because it's gonna prevent a tight seal. So I'm gonna sand that down. So now it's smooth on both sides, it's time to pop this right in here. And I'm gonna make sure there's a washer on the top. And I'm actually gonna add one on the bottom as well. Super safe. Just gotta thread it tight. So washer. Put that on. Screw this guy tight. And now, since this is the inlet, I gotta do the outlet next. I'm gonna crush that out. Now this connection is the most worrisome to me because unlike the others, which are sitting over the flood table, if there's a leak, they'll drip into the flood table. This one is over the floor because it's on the other end. So I'm gonna make sure to really clamp down with one of these. That looks pretty safe. I snake this down to be below the outlet. So if there is ever any dripping, it's not gonna hopefully connect with electricity. And then snakes to over here. Now I just gotta attach it to the pump and we're good to go. I'm gonna place this pump on the far corner. That way it really ensures there's a good exchange of water. So water returns there, but it's being pulled from the opposite end. Now, if anything ever breaks in the system and water starts pouring out, I wanna avoid the reservoir being drained to empty. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this pump so it's not on the bottom of the tank. That way, if anything bad happens, the water will never go lower than where that pump pulls water from, right? It'll just Maybe the flood table will have a problem, but the fish will have water to live in, so it'll keep them safer. All right, the pump is positioned and ready to roll. I'm gonna plug it into this interval timer right here, 
And I've set it to go on once every 15 minutes. And what I'm gonna try to do is just time it so when one's on, the other is off. That way the water level stays relatively even because if they're both draining at the same time, it's gonna really lower this water level. I wish I had this timer I used to have that would switch between two outlets so I could set it to like 15 minutes and it would just pump one pump at a time and the other one would be off and then flip, but I can't find one. If anyone out there knows of them and knows where to get them, I would love to hear from you, let me know. All right, let's flip it to on just to make sure the pump is pumping. Do I hear anything? Yeah, I should probably plug it in, huh? Yes, it's working. Now let's cap that. Okay, and then on the other side, let's set the level. The water coming. So, you know, if I pulled that out, it would just drain right out. So I want to elevate this a little. That way it actually floods. Put the filter on it. Now, I can't get the height to the exact, if I tighten these totally down, I won't get the height where I want. So one of the things that's, that I do with these guys is I'll, I'll screw them tighter or looser to adjust the height. So that looks like where I want it to be. Let's see, boom. It's not much of an aquaponic system without plants, huh? So uh, I'm gonna start filling it in. Now, what I'm gonna do, I have plants already established in biochar baskets that'll fit perfect in here, their roots are going. Um, so I'm gonna put those in the first half and then on the back halves, I'm actually gonna put plants in soil that don't require much fertilizer and those will be in the back and those will just be bottom watering plants, which will do great. Now, fortunately, I have some really well-established plants that I can put right in here. I mean, look at this, look at those roots. That is some filtration power. And uh, I'm thrilled. These are planted in biochar. I've been growing them for about two months in this, just straight biochar. So that as well will help filter. And I'm gonna pop these in right now. That's some nice filtration power. And I think that'll look real nice once it starts filling in and getting established. All right, I have all of the plants positioned and now I'm just gonna give it some time to cycle, get cleaned up. I'm gonna test the water and then I'm gonna get the plecos in. I've got to say, I'm going to really miss just being able to look at these guys. They're so cute. You know, the above view from the pond, it's just not, not the same. I'll eventually going to have to build a pond with windows on it so I can see them again and look at their faces. All right, so I've waited one day and the water's looking pretty good. But I will say there's one thing that's missing. These, these pieces of wood right here, you know, they've all been picked clean and dried out. And I have and all the other aquariums tons of algae covered logs. Now, common plecos, self and plecos, they eat tons of algae. So I'm gonna swap these guys with those so that way there's plenty of algae and plant growth and some duckweed even in here. And I think they'll love it. And then tomorrow my plan is to move them in. Sorry, angelfish. I'm pretty sure the plecos are gonna like this log even more than you. Look at all that algae. So much moss in here too. This guy's really overgrown. So I'm gonna pull a bunch of this vegetation out too. This is such a great addition. Look at this cave. It's just covered in algae for the need and then give them a great hiding place too. Almost forgot this guy, the heater. This is a 300 watt heater right here. I'm gonna set it to 80 degrees, which still love. Keep them nice and warm, but not too hot. Plenty of oxygen still. So I wanna make sure they can't jump out. So initially what I was doing is I was going to start covering in this greenhouse cover right here. I was gonna cut pieces to make sure they couldn't jump out. But then I realized it wouldn't really be able to seam too well and it would get gunky and then one of them fell in. So instead what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna build a lip. So if they start going Shamu Stadium, there's a wall to keep them in. The other thing I didn't wanna go with was netting because plecos, like you can't even use nets when you, when you wanna move them around because their fins will get totally stuck in them. So I was worried if there was a net up here, they might jump into it and get stuck on it. And who knows what sort of catastrophe you could come into. They could be caught up, they could be stuck, elevated above. I don't even know, I didn't wanna think about it. So it wasn't an option with plecos to me. But check out this material I just got at um, the store. It's great, it's, you know, with this little piece of plastic stripping here, it's made of PVC. 
So you can see, you know, I'm gonna build a frame around the outside. I cut this pattern right here so that way it sits slightly over on the lip because the tub, it's curved inward. So now it'll have a little bit of oh, no, overlap. So it'll s sit on top, which will be good. Now to attach the corners, I'm gonna use a brace with bolts. So I'm gonna pre-drill and then screw them in. You might have been wondering why I used this small drill bit and then wobbled it around and make a bigger hole. Well, it's because I forgot my drill set at home. So this was the only drill bit I could find and uh, I had to use it, so made it work. So now I've built this little strip around that'll help keep them in. So if they decide to try to jump, well, there's another six inches about keeping them in. So I think that'll really help. All right, one last thing. I just want to double check all the water parameters to make sure they're great. All right, I'm testing the pH right now, and I want it to be around neutral, which it is right above. And it's okay, anywhere between, I would say, I mean, for, for the fish I'm putting in, probably between 6.5 and 7.5 is great. 7.3, that's within the range. If anything, I'd want it to be a little lower, but I'm not gonna mess with it. That's, that's great, that's great. And with all the wood and the tannins in here, it might drop a little over time, but I'm gonna monitor closely, make sure it stays between 6.5 and 7.5 for this tank. Now let's check the PPMs. And if you're not familiar, PPMs are gonna be the measure of contamination in the water. All right, and this is at 342. So I wanna make sure there's no nitrates in here because that's not super low, but not super high. So I'm gonna do an additional test just to make sure it's not nitrates. The only thing I'm really worried about, to be honest, is nitrates, right? Because I wanna make sure this, this system is cycling effectively and that nitrogen isn't accumulating in here. So I'm gonna test it with some strips. Dip it in and let's compare. All right, so you can see that's really nice. I like that. The hardness isn't too high. Carbonates are pretty low. The pH, we tested, it's around six, oh, that's, it's still warming up, so I would guess that's around seven, two. Um, but you can see that those top ones are white, which means there are no nitrates, no nitrites, and no chlorine. And that's what I was worried about. So this looks great, it's ready for fish. All right, the moment of truth. We're finally ready to add the first fish, and this is the first of three plecos we're adding today. We're starting out with plecos. They're so hardy, but they're tropical fish from the Amazon, so I think they're gonna absolutely love this. They're also gonna be great for this because there's plenty of sunlight here and they're gonna just be eating algae and converting it into nutrients for all the plants, which is wonderful. So starting off with them and we'll see what we'll add next, but let's move this little guy in. This is the first of three, he's the littlest. And one thing with plecos, you never wanna use a net, that's why it's in this bin because they'll get caught up in it. So let's see how he does. Ready, buddy? It's your new home. I think you're gonna like it. There he is. Yep. Oh. And immediately we won't be able to see him, which is perfect. That's what he wants. So he's in there. Yes. There we go. Nice and slow. Welcome to your new home. Oh, yes. That's just gotta be awesome. Look at that. I can see him. That's cool. Love that. All right, last but not least, and I'm adding plenty of duckweed and plants in their old home. This is another one I've had for eight years. Big one, another big one. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Here you go, here you go. Oh, sorry about that. This. I'd say this could be your forever home. I might, uh, I'll probably upgrade over the years, get it a little bigger. Yes. Oh. I'm so glad I get to offer these guys this setup. I don't know who else is gonna go in with them, but so often plecos, they're just not appreciated and they're just the coolest personalities and it's good to give them a really good life like this. I'm excited for them. And my plants are gonna love it too. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as me and my three plecos did. Uh, if you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, please let us know. We'd love to hear from you, and uh, we look forward to hearing from you on the next video. Uh, if you like it and want to hear more, like and subscribe, of course. Thank you.